I live in Japan and um, Sri Lanka and in Asia for nine years. And in Japan, it's really important to understand in art and everything, the water has the power. But you think about it in life, water and wind have the power. Yeah. So everything's moving, everything's color, and everything's based on water. Yeah. So a lot of my work is about water that's moving and, and about the time. Everything is water. So in that moment when the when the water and the pigment are, are, are moving, this is the moment it's alive. What you're seeing is a relic. This is a relic of a ritual. The water gets blends with the pigments, the pigments blend with other pigments, you get all the colors. The thing about mom that is really exceptional, what the people have done there, is they've been, been inclusive to all colors. They quote all colors, all cultures, and they're in movement. And like a lot of museums are really stuck. This museum is moving, just like the colors in that painting. They're, they're, they're inclusive to all colors, they're inclusive to all people. And I think that more museums um, could learn a lot from this. And they're alive. And you, you go there and you talk to the people, and the people have, are, they're alive. They're, 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 they have a home, they have a life. And this is a great, we look at all the people coming into Europe now. If we could welcome them in an environment that was alive, and we, that was it's colorful, then it would be wonderful. This is the largest work I've ever made. Because in Mom, you, the, the idea is so big. The idea is just giant. The idea that you can take something that was a salami factory and make a museum where people live. Shouldn't we all be living in a museum? If the world were to embrace color and embrace diversity like, like the museum has, I think this would be a much better world. That's why I admire it so much. And the people who run it and the people involved, the artists, they all have this tremendously open I always start with water. First you have to cleanse it. it but, but not cleanse it like clean it. You, you, you cleanse the, the water, you put the water as a beginning. It, it cleanses the, the environment and it, it's, it's, and then it prepares it for the color. And then when the, when the pigment meets the, the wet base, then it, it meets itself. It, it, it's, it's joining, it's not separate. That's why I always start with, with water, because when the pigment and the water come, they're joining the pigments on the wall and they're blending. And uh, so, but I, I'm not too, I, I don't think too much about my work. It just is, you know? Yeah. I never think about it. I didn't. Basically, you just have, the Chinese have five colors. Red, yellow, blue, black, and white. Those are the five colors of Asia. And then all the colors themselves, they blend. I, I don't blend the colors. When they, when they, when they meet each other, they, they, they blend on their own. You know, they have a life of their own. Pigment and water has a life of its own. So I, I'm facilitating it, the painting. Who is the painter, me or the water? But I have no idea how it's going to look. Because if I, if I tried to plan how it looked, it wouldn't look that way anyway. I am there in a ritual, and because I'm autistic and I like rituals. Rituals are what help an autistic person survive. You prepare the ritual and you facilitate it, but the power is in the water. And that painting is totally an, an interaction between me and I think it's we all these primordial memories, these old memories of being in water. So when I, I stand back and I, I watch the water running and working and I'm amazed. And what do you feel at this time? It's the feeling is so multi-layered, there's so much going on, but it's all so simple. I, I'm there to facilitate, to see, that's why I call it calligraphy of, dark, calligraphy of water. I'm as interested as anybody else to see what it's going to look like. It's it's. Without, without that mystery. Yeah. And what would life be without mystery? It's mysterious. And that's what's, what's wonderful. And life should be mysterious. And art should be mysterious. And art is a part of, for me, there's no separation. This is my art and this is my life. I want my life to be mysterious and I want my art to somehow reflect the mystery of my life. Part of being autistic, we take each day, we remain kind of like a child. And a child doesn't know how he's going to turn out in life. And actually, when you're 30 years old, nobody knows what's going to happen in life. And we, people plan, but it doesn't always work out that way. And my artists, I, I don't know how it's going to look. But I, I, I trust, having faith, that something will come out.
it, it looks very simple, and, and, and so I tried to paint two in one day. I thought, well, this is so simple, I can paint two of them. And then the second one I threw away. Because there is that moment when you have to almost be somewhat, it transcends you. It's a transcendent experience for me. And the moment it becomes rational, it's dead. It, it is entirely not rational. And, and I think rational art is great. I'm not rational. Love is not rational. Children are not rational. Death is not rational. And certainly my paintings are not rational. They are a reflection of something that I don't even understand. I wouldn't want to understand. It's not a meaning. Water is the meaning. Is the essence of, I said, water and movement and, and color to me are what I see in the world. We're all moving water with color. And I think this again what I love about this museum is they encompass all of these people colors all the emotions the good the bad the beauty all of this is, is and I think that's what because it's inclusive of every color and the museum there and the people especially the people that I've met are very inclusive again I'll stress this they are a model of what I hope the world becomes